Jesus said in Matthew 24, 12, that lawlessness would abound. The word abound means literally out of control. What am I telling you? Right on the other side of all of this chaos that we're going through right now, in just a few days, in a millisecond, it's going to be over and be over forever. When you see these signs, the Bible says, lift up your heads and rejoice. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, he puts pen to parchment and he writes, For the Lord himself, he makes that double entry. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Why the shout? Because the shout is the symbol of victory over death, hell, and the grave. And he will descend with the voice of the archangel. Why the voice of the archangel? because the archangel is announcing the appearance of royalty and he is the king of kings, the Lord of lords. It's going to happen just that fast. Daniel 12, 4, God says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words to the book and seal it until the end of time. Until when? The end of time. When is that? That's right now. When men shall run to and fro, you want to see a to and fro? Go out there and sit beside that freeway at five o'clock. God's message to the church, get ready, get ready. Now you have a piece of plastic in your hand that can reach out and touch anyone on planet Earth in seconds. We've gone from horseback to automobiles. We've gone from automobiles to supersonic jets and from jets to the moon. We are that generation where the knowledge has been greatly increased. Medical science has been so increased, we've had to redefine what death is. God's message to the church, get ready, get ready. We are that knowledge. The waging of a war with pestilence, as a pestilence without vaccine, without solution, the release of this deadly virus should be a wake-up call to every person in America. It's a wake-up call for this country and for the world because according to John the Revelator, it will not be the last time. Fact, a sovereign God has allowed this because if God is not in control of everything, he is not sovereign. And if God is not sovereign, he's not God. God is saying, I still have all power in heaven and on earth. Bible says, let every man examine himself to see if he be of the faith. Everyone can sing when we all get to heaven, but it's a living fact we're not all going to heaven. Because the Bible says, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that walk that way. Narrow is the way that leads to the gate of heaven, and few there be that walk in that way. But I want you to hear this. Look deeply in your soul and ask yourself, am I ready? Are my family members ready? God's message to the church, get ready, get ready. The church, the victorious church of Jesus Christ, the church without spot or wrinkle, the church of Jesus Christ that's preaching the gospel, the church triumphant, the church that's looking for his glorious appearing, the church that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb and their sins have been forgiven, the church that is the light of the world and the salt of the earth, the church without spot or wrinkle, that's the church triumphant. The greatest question of your life is, are you in that church? It's one thing to be around the church, and it's another thing to be in the church. You can know Jesus as a fact, but is Jesus Lord of your life? Are you ready? Is your family ready? Jesus Christ, the crown prince of glory, appears suddenly in the heavens as lightning flashes from the east or the west. The trump of God has sounded, announcing the appearance of royalty. The voice of the archangel summons the righteous from their graves. All over planet Earth, the graves will explode and the occupants will begin to soar toward the heavens. Cars will be empty beside the streets and the freeways. The motors are running, the drivers and the occupants are strangely missing. Homes of believers will have the supper dishes on the table. The food will be on the stove, but the occupants are gone to the marriage supper of the Lamb. 
Headlines will be screaming, millions are missing. The television announcers will be going crazy trying to explain what has happened. An economic crash is on the way because the Christian tax base has just left. Who's going to pay for all of this? Television cameras will video the cemeteries of your city, the empty homes, the supper tables, with food on the table and no one's home. Where are we? We're gone! We're gone! We're gone! We're not coming back! Not till seven years. If you're not a believer, don't you dare fly with a Christian pilot. Cell phones will be jammed with families all over the earth trying desperately to get in touch with one another. Churches will be packed with weeping, sobbing, hysterical people who believe the Lord has come and they have been left behind. Their choice is now. When you're left behind, your choice is to take the mark of the beast and lose your soul or to have your head cut off. If you have your head cut off, God will place you in the book of Revelation under the altar of those who are slain for their witness. And when Jesus comes back the second time, you will be resurrected and join in that heavenly entourage. Let me tell you, it's just so much easier to find Jesus and go up the first time. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. Prepare my life for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. From this day forward, I pledge to serve you with all of my heart, soul, mind, and body. Even so, come Lord Jesus, I will serve the Lord all of my life. Amen.